Well, there we are. It's come to oh, just expect you one or two others. Welcome aboard. Well, good afternoon, everybody. A very warm welcome to Tuesday's two o'clock webinar. As you can rightly see on the screen, <laughs> we've been doing this for 27 weeks. I can't, but honestly, doesn't time fly by? Doesn't time fly by? So just one or two others just joining us. So, right, without, let's, let's wag and roll. So today we're going to talk all about digital marketing. Now, as the name, as, as the guide suggests, this is a beginner's guide. So, uh, hopefully, we get, we'll, uh, for those of you who are total novices or just would like to uh, reacquaint yourself with the world of digital marketing, I hope you enjoy the next hour. Now, as we always say, we have a set format for our Tuesday specials. We have the chat line for you to use. We, we are um, we're recording this as well. And uh, so if you are watching it on the, on the recording, I hope, um, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I did. <laughs> but uh, so we are recording it. So uh, you can watch it. That'll be on the Humble Lep website. We will be sending everybody a, a copy of, of the slides through. So you'll have those. If you feel like contributing on social media, you can see the uh, at sign for my good self. And as I mentioned every week, under the under the scheme of the Grow My SME uh, from the Humble Left, there's also the opportunity, if you would like some one-to-one uh, -one, uh, help, that's also available. So please feel free to uh, drop me a line. Now, I was going to say a very warm welcome to anyone who is new to our Tuesday soiree. Those of you who are old timers, we've got we've got a bit of a format here. We're a bit of format. We have a little quiz. There will be uh, during the course of the day, course of the afternoon, course of the hour, uh, some contrived uh, contrived jokes. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Um, and we'll be asked, we always do we always do a quiz as well. So um, so we do that. Actually, I got a little note through. Got a little note through from somebody who'd been on a previous webinar i said you never tell us about your sort of work and what you do well i said well you know well, you know it's not intended that way i'm here to impart some information i said well oh, no i said when it comes down to next webinar i'll just share share something and i'll you know I'll just give you a little tip bit my um my, my first job my first job was in a um uh, working for a shoe recycling company i found it soul destroying and then, um, actually, I've just, uh, I've just been out for a walk. I always like to go out for a walk prior to coming in. I've just been, um, just been talking to my neighbour. I've been talking to my neighbour. He's, um, he told me, he'd just been out. He's single. single. He's just been out on a, on a, on a, it's a, a gas night, on a first date, socially distanced date. How, I said to him, how did it go? How did it go? He said, not, not so well. I said, well, what, what was the lady called? I said, he said, um, he said simile. I said, um, have you any idea what your metaphor? <sighs> right, where are the two jokes out of the way I've got? There? Actually, someone said, uh, do, you, do you need jokes about snakes? Said, There's no way I'm going to rattle them off. Right, let's move on because we've had the, got the jokes out of the way. So, right, um, quiz time. Quiz time, all about marketing. Pens at the ready. We don't have pens at the ready. Actually, we have in this digital world. You can use the chat line. True or false? Also, you might keep an eye on the screen. Keep an eye on, and also, eyes on the screen. Not on this, oh, I'm doing my ironing routine or doing a bit of filing. You have to pay attention this afternoon. There we go. Right. Here we go. Question one. Question one. The average consumer attention span is 10 seconds. True or false? This is coming in. So, what's the answer to that? True or false? What a few people, oh, what are we going to say here? True or false? Oh, I don't know. That's not false. Ha! Little trick question to start you off. Eight seconds. Are you actually thinking about your website or your e commerce platforms, wherever it be? It's about making a fairly immediate attention grabber. We all scroll through lots of content. There we go. Now, here's another one 75% of all marketing 
is expected to be spent on digital marketing. Mm. What do you think? True or false? Anyone, uh, anyone a little pun to that? Right, the answer, of course, lots of our, future, our current marketing is spent digitally. Right, here we go. Oh, a bit of a change of direction here. Or like a little historical marketing question. Bertha Dems successfully marketed her husband's invention, the motor car, when she took it for a 65-mile trip. You'd expect, that's a bit of a random question, you're thinking. True or false? Hmm. Yeah, well, anyone? Oh, was that? I can't see the chat line. What's, what's happened here? What's happened here? Alt H. Alt H. The answer is true. It is very true. And there is the aforementioned car or version of car. And, you know, while she took her on this journey, because the idea was that cars could only go a few feet. So to prove a car's worth, it's 65 miles and during the course of that journey no less invented brakes a version of brakes as well so where's that there's a thing behind every successful man you know how the saying goes so there we go bertha benz google that one great story actually do you know how it is go on we can go for a tangent we can go for a tangent do you know where the name mercedes benz came from hmm? anyone know that one that's a good one. It comes from a girl's name. Daughter was called Mercedes. Oh, go on, next one. Anyway, next one, next quiz question. Blackberry hired actresses. I can't believe this, can you? To flirt with men in bars in order to push blackberries on the public. Well, you've seen a glimpse of this. True or false? Reaching for my phone at the moment, so I'm look at that. See, I've got a phone there. Blackberry uh, hired actresses that you know. I know you thought, can't believe it. We did. True. Well, I think that's called disrupting marketing. There we go. So, right, let's move swift. Oh, we're not going. To, no, we're off. We're off. True and false. Now we're on to something else. Who's that? Who is that? Who is? That. Got to the chat line. that is Tim Berners-Lee, who is accredited with nothing other than the beginnings of the World Wide Web. Mm. There we go. Can't see the chat line at the moment. What's going on here? Right, next question, next question. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Anyone fancy that? Another inventor, another marketeer. No, no, that is. Let's have a look at the chat line. Anybody know? Elon Musk. There we go. There he is. Credited with many different things. We have got a supplemental question here as well. Anybody fancy telling me what that is related to? Elon Musk. Yeah, quite a few people have got it right. Well done to Kenneth and Brady. Diane wins the name. I'll tell you what, Diane. Big shout out to Diane who's on the webinar. That is the name of his child. Can you believe that? Fancy being called that. Yeah. There you go. There's the name of his child. Friend of mine actually said the same thing, like, a bit like the Beckhams. They named their named his son after where the child was conceived. <laughs> Can't believe it, can you? I thought calling the child bus shelter was a bit much. Anyway, so there you are. That was Elon. That's Elon Musk's. Yes, that's what he's gonna. There we go. Without further ado, let's move on. Final one. Who's that? Come on, final one. Who is that? Last marketing question of the day. Anybody know who that is? Yeah. Oh, got one on the chat line. Oh, which line's not working properly? That's James Dyson. Yeah, James Dyson. Famous inventor. Yeah, we've we've got we've got a we've got a Dyson. 
Uh, I'm thinking of getting rid of it. He sits in the corner and gathers dust. Right, let's move swiftly along. <laughs> Final question before we, before we, who's that? Come on, any takers on who that might be? This is a marketing question. That is Marconi. I was going to say his first name, but I can't pronounce it. Marconi, none other. And what did Marconi do? What did he do? Well, in 1896, he was the first human to demonstrate public transmission of wireless signals. Mm. Well, what does that mean? First transmission of wireless signals. It moves swiftly on to digital marketing. In effect, has nothing to do with the internet because the first person was Mr. Marconi. Digital marketing, from a definition, you could say, is any form of marketing products or services that involves electronic devices. And we're going to see this is going to be the theme through our, our webinar about the transition. And we'll talk about online predominantly, but we'll also talk about offline marketing. So there we go, as is indicated right there. Now, who can remember those days when you were either as a child or as a parent, sitting in the back of that we you know when we were when we were allowed to go out when we we're allowed to go out of course uh we'd just sit in the back of the car and those famous words would come in and they are we there yet and one of the games we always used to play child and as also subsequently as a parent was uh spot things to look at so i used, we used to love looking at things like billboards and anyway, you spent i mean at least to live in america i spent some time living over there and uh, Chicago and spent all your time driving around looking at well, apart from my eyes in the road, and it was on billboards. So great example. Now, where's this leading? Because that is traditional, what you could call traditional marketing. And the other day it was interesting. I was not far from uh, Lincoln on a business trip, legitimate reason for going out. And uh, it's surprising how many businesses I saw with signs up outside their premises. Never forget. That you are in effect as the theme is that you're looking for people's eyeballs anyway here's a clever thing so you move on the theme of cars today look how clever uh, some people are market they've got your move bmw and they are look at an even bigger uh so from audi and they've got an even bigger advert using the word checkmate so there's a play on words between two different signs actually could be signed like anyone watching anyone watching the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. If you're not, well worth, well worth a view. Number one show, great, great, great series. Allowed to have a bit of a detour. So, what does all this mean? It's gone from traditional, clever, disruptive marketing to using technology. It is perceived that that is a vision of where our future will be. Yeah, we'll all have a chauffeur. Uh, but seriously, uh, people will be in a... Um, moving along and they will be receiving information in front of their very eyes which we do to a certain extent now but obviously not quite as probably as sophisticated as that and depending on who you are and where you are the message may well change which is constantly known as the in what was known as the internet of things in its simplest terms digital marketing is fighting for your customers or your prospects eyeballs i was going to do some jokes about eyeballs but i have a feeling some of the jokes are getting cornier and cornier so you're thinking that what you'd like to do is to fight for your customers eyeballs so when you're thinking about your marketing of your business where are you likely to see your clients eyeballs where are they likely to see you so there's no harm in putting signs up outside your premises if you are uh, of that inclination or that desire so fighting for eyeballs now here's a question this will be a challenging question for you before we come back to that think about this 
little task for you. Maybe when you uh, finish this webinar, get a blank sheet of paper and write that and, or a list of all your clients and ask yourself this question. How have you won those clients? Hmm. Sometimes it's a really interesting exercise to think about your own marketing is how you actually won them in the first place. Well, the, the journey from your client to being a customer. I'd be interested to know how many of those have been won digitally, online, offline, or how they've come about. Often a great way of you thinking about the success you've had. Also, to think about how, why some of your clients actually stay with you. Quite an interesting task to do. I'd probably lay money. A lot of it came from word of mouth. Mm. Anyway, let's move swiftly along and talk about the benefits of digital marketing. They're usually considered to be two or three. First and foremost, it is probably the best way that you can build brand awareness by creating your own stamp on the web, your own digital footprint. Secondly, that you've got a there's an opportunity day and night to engage with prospective customers and generate, generate leads. The chance to be deepening with your customers' relationships, building a royal following, building a loyal custom base. And finally, guide customers through the funnel to build brand, to engage, to build rapport, keep it going, and get customers through the whole funnel. Because one of the ways of looking at this is to think of your customers, and I, forgive me, I have shown this slide before on previous Tuesdays, is to think there's five stages to a customer's journey. Firstly, in our, your customer will start life as a stranger. So it's built initially for many who are strangers to build awareness. You will then move on to some form of the, the, the client prospect will be considering your options. You would like to think then they move to actually a purchase, may take some time to get to that point. Then to think about keeping them as a client. And a perfect scenario, the final part, is that your customers become your advocates. So your message will change your customers depending on where they are on the journey, which ultimately comes down to the most powerful thing in digital marketing is about data. Knowing who your customers are and where they are in your journey. So you putting a sign up outside your building may well be an awareness scenario, or may well be a retention scenario, but you won't necessarily have data to support that. One of the powerful things in a lot of digital marketing, as we'll see, is that you can measure what you are doing, see whether it's a success or not. Because ultimately, my advice is never to spend and hope. So what I'd advise is to think that when you are with your clients is to make sure the content you're putting in front of your clients is matched to the journey in which they are at. So your message to a person who is a stranger is slightly different to one who is an existing customer. So first and foremost, we're now going to look about having a strategy. The real question here must be the same one. Who is your audience? Who are you trying to reach? Now, there are lots of dictionary definitions of marketing, but fundamentally, in its absolute simplest terms, it's who is your audience? What's the message? Why is it different to your competition? And how are you going to reach them? And it's best symbolized in this picture. So who is the, you know, your audience, your message, your theme, your brand, your competitors, how are you going to reach them? You want to be, and then you, you would 
the subsection of that is the stage at which people are at. But ultimately, who is your audience? What's your message? How are you going to reach them? And why are you different to your competitors? So often that can be encapsulated the message in your brand. I've seen earlier one of the little quirky questions that people have got usually a very short attention span. Maybe one, one thing you might wish to do in your digital marketing is ask a friend or wait to or go onto your website, stay on it for eight seconds, and then leave the website and then them to tell you what you do as a business and how you can help them or the value you offer. It's a great little test because it, it will clearly demonstrate or you hope it demonstrate the difference. Have you got the attention span? Have you got the brand? Have you got a simplified message? May I have a little test for you. Right, this is Google's thinking. Your messages really should be this. For you to see, you want your customers to see you, to think about you and to do something. To see you, to think about you and do something and then ultimately to care about what you're doing and that would be your customers or your advocates. See, think, do. Right. If you talk about the coronavirus and the government's messages, you probably could take now being overly political, probably political now, is that the probably most powerful messages we saw were back in March. Stay at home, save the NHS, protect lives, version thereof. Yeah, just stay at home, stay all that good stuff. And you could argue that in, in the course of the summer, the message has got convoluted in all the, and we're back to a slightly different message now, but it's very simple. And the thing I would say to you, the error possibly the government may have made is that the message became very convoluted and people didn't fully understand. It was a great thinking that the simpler the message, the easier it is people to understand. But when you're thinking about your marketing, much in the same way as they did, think about a very simple message. Right. Who were they? Well, who's going <laughs> to... I know, never said that this webinar was a little bit anachronistic. The thinking is, that's... Oh, we've got someone up on the webinar, who has that one? Yeah, a great point there. Kevin made get Brexit done was a great way of simplifying a message. So yes, good point. Great. Well, get get Brexit done, uh, but I won't work straight too much on politics. Right. You think that you would ideally trying to build your relationship for the long term. So you're not looking for a quick win. Like George and Mildred, it's a long term relationship. But when you're thinking about your your, your strategy, I think what you're trying to do is to gain people, as you talk about getting attraction, or to keep people on their journey. And each and every time you're doing something, to think about measuring it. Right. Now, you can do so much of this by automating things. Okay? You don't need to do a lot of it yourself. A lot of it can be automated. So one or two of you on the call, I know Robert was saying earlier, absolute novice. Well, there's some tips here. The next slide will show you about, and you'll get a copy of these, seven tools you can use that if you master these, they can do a lot of your marketing for you. So you've got one place to go that will integrate your social media do a lot of your email marketing, talk to your website, do, talk to, do a lot of those things from one screen and for things to actually be done, set up and actually automated. So you're not spending a lot of time running campaigns. A lot of things can be set and programmed and undertaken. Now, I have to be honest, I've not used each and every one of those, but the only ones I can shout out will be infusion shop soft and the probably the most popular and well known is likes of HubSpot. But these are tools, one portal 
to carry out a lot of what you're going to see over the next half an hour. Right. The next thing I would strongly advise you all to do is to think that you need evidence of what you can do as a business. This comes in the form of social proof and usually comes in three different ways. Do you have reviews from your clients about you and your business justifying what you can do? So you may go to the likes of these platforms, Google reviews, some of you be on, depending on the nature of your business, TripAdvisor or Trustpilot, or if you are a trade, the checker trade. Where do I go to think about this? Ask yourself this question from a customer's perspective. Where will I go to find social proof, evidence, the are what you say you are and you've done a great job given value? If you haven't got any reviews, I would advocate strong enough to make sure you're asking your clients for that. How many of you are buying on Amazon? Mm, let me have a think. Mm, all of you. How many of you are influenced by reviews? Well, probably needless to say, a, a big chunk. And the same way that it's driven in that principle, so I'd think about adopting the same rules yourselves. So let's crack on and go through all aspects of online digital marketing. I'm going to start with email marketing. Classic. So back to the customer journey, you've got to think about where you each of your customers are. So some will maybe just a, at a certain different, different stage. So you may wish to adopt a slightly different approach. Now, having the first thing I would strongly recommend if you haven't got so already, and you can use those platforms I've already mentioned, is to make sure you have a customer database. Now, the key thing, bearing in mind, is to have a database, but also to make sure you've got the ability for your clients to unsubscribe who are compliant with all the GDPR regulations. So a CRM system, and I've already highlighted numbers, is where you can put customers' data in there and set up campaigns to go out. So email marketing. So email marketing remains a constant as a key part of any digital marketing, but it's actually on the rise, caused a lot by... <laughs> by the fact where a lot of us are at home in front of computers. Now, a little tip for you here. Make sure you look at that, that the open rate of emails is proportionate to the amount of words you put in the email subject line. If you're going to be sending out email marketing, think really carefully about the words you choose and the numbers of words as well. You want to make it interesting and engaging. And I'll take a risk. Much in the same way as this organization did, that's contained within this email campaign that's gone out. This is about asking questions, a very simple message, an org a food organization there, American, but you can see there's a little few jokes in there and so forth, but they're using animation within a campaign. It's very different. It makes people sit up and take notice. Ask yourself when you get something through from some of the big brands, the, the, the message, what is, is often to be replicated in your own thinking. Visual, simple message, and a very powerful image. So email marketing. Also humor in there, the likes of Dropbox, is sending out a message here. I've not heard from somebody for a while, and it's a gentle prod or reminder to you. So what you are doing is reminding your customers. A good example now for many of us are all working remotely or have a business is actually just to remind people you're still there. Now you can automate triggered emails as well. 
that triggered emails are often in this way, like Kate Spade here, it can be a thank you or these four things. People who are buying online would abandon the cart. You want to re-engage, a bit like Dropbox did, people haven't bought you for a while. You get in subscription reminders, so you may be in a, that business, or you may have a record of your customer's birthday or anniversary. So they'll get an automated email on that particular day. You can set up the reminders. So one thing you may do this is all about collecting data. So oh, email marketing. But ideally, you see lots of blanket emails going out, but please. Please, please, please personalize them. So if that's it, if you've got the data, it's not just in a blanket, it is a named person. Right. So first stage there is to think about email marketing. The second thing in your digital marketing will be to think about your website. Now we haven't got time today to go into great detail, but invariably the first thing I would suggest any business to do if you wish to appear in a local search is to make sure you're registered your business with Google My Business. You'll see it when you type in a local business, say looking for a florist or whoever it might be, and you'll see a little map appearing and you'll see three businesses. That is because those businesses have registered with Google and they're close where you are so register with google my business it's a micro site it's the engine room for your google reviews also relates to google maps you can put offers in there you can do events you can do so much if you're not on google my business i'm sorry to say i think you're missing a trick so please make sure you're on google is and you're using it to its fullest capability but don't forget also, you might want to think about Bing as well. Think about Bing because Bing is some of you will be using Microsoft search engines and Bing is also an essential to be on as well. So you can, as I mentioned, you can post, you can do so much on Bing and on Google My Business. Now, we've got, what makes a great website? Well, that's a question after asking and I've shown this analogy before not just because they're open all hours <clears throat> but think of your think of your website as like a corner shop you would like it's not just it look the part but you would like to receive visitors and the visitors to stay for a period of time so your website isn't just about cosmetics it's all about performance so an app absolute essential if you're not doing it already speak to your web designer make sure you have sight of your google analytics because here is an example of google analytics now you do not have to be super geek to understand google analytics this here is a shot of how a a business has acquired its traffic. You can see how people are finding the website, how they're being acquired, what they're doing in terms of their behavior on the site, and then are they converting to a purchase? It's a fantastic way of, of thinking about how your marketing is working. So please get access to your Google Analytics, study them, because you'll see if people are leaving after a short period of time, or are only doing one thing, you may have unfavorable bounce rates. So your Google Analytics are, as in the, the, the corner shop example, you've got people coming to the shop, they're walking in the front door, and they're leaving after 10 seconds. I don't think that's what Arkwright wanted, nor would you want from your own business. So Google Analytics, essential. There are other things you can do, and the likes of Hotjar is a good place to go because you can get heat maps relating to your website. You can see what people have done on the front page. 
So you may think you know, your website, you may perceive to be one thing, but it's all about analyzing the performance. So analytics and the likes of Hotjar are good places to go to get a flavor of the performance of the site. There we go. Now, one mistake often business makes on their website is that do not put a very visible call to action. Remember the eight second test? What do you want people to do? It's surprising how many people arrive on a website, only stay on for a short length of time because they want contact information, they want phone numbers. Think about having a very visible call to action that people can see because what do you want them to do? There we are. Now, Google Eat. What is Google Eat time? Well, Google Eat is this. When you're writing content and your website is favorably ranked by Google, it's to show that you've got expertise in your subject. So if you're talking about a particular issue, your, sub, your, your content should relate to that. He also wants to have authority that so may link to uh, other uh, worthwhile websites and may be uh, referenced in that way and also to be considered trustworthy. So it's really essential for many of you to have an SSL certificate for your website. So it's got some trustworthiness. A lot to read on this and cover it quickly, but Google Eat is well worth investigating to see about the performance of a website. So we've covered that very quickly. Email marketing website. The next thing to talk about is search engine optimization. For those of you who are unfamiliar and absolute novices, it's just the way in which you can get your website to be on the front page of Google and to perform best. So to be found on Google, to be on the first page is probably considered to be the, the golden fleece, the big, the big thing. Right. I'm going to cover this very swiftly because time is short. There are three ways of SEO. The first thing in our beginner's guide is on-page SEO, off-page and technical SEO. So what is on-page SEO? It is everything you do to actually on the actual pages of the website themselves. So often people would use search for, to get onto the first page. You want to make sure you've probably got the most appropriate keywords on your website. And I've shown this a number of times. Again, you'll get a copy of this slide, but using the, these four platforms are free or nominal cost depending on what version you get to do some keyword research so you can use the most appropriate keywords on the pages of your website what you don't want to do is to is to is to, in this particular example i've shown it before is to think about using very high volume but keenly fought for words so if you were in a business that sold vitamins you may think about actually narrowing the search say vitamins four and then it comes to you may your your business may be specializing in vitamins for women over 50 over 40 or in those situations you can see on the screen so you want to make sure that you're using a long tail keywords on your website as opposed to using just vitamins. So you find out about the keywords for your website. You can use the like of the Google Search Console to find out and it'll tell you which web which terms are used currently your website you'll see an image like that on the screen it'll tell you how the, the the terminology used that people will find your on your current website or you can use rfs h a h r e f s is a great place to go and you can do research into 
not just into your own website, but also your competitors website and find the keywords that your competitors rank for. The RFs, Google Search Console, are great beginner's tools to use for optimization. So, once you've found your keywords, what do you do then? We do this. As you can see there, you would use the words in the page title, and then subsequently underneath, you've got, I can't remember off the top of my head, about 150 characters in the meta description. Now, if I'm not, hope I'm not blinding you in the science. If not, don't worry. Ask your web designer to make sure you've got on-page SEO, the page titles are keyword friendly, the meta descriptions are keyword friendly. And also, oops, come back to that one, that you, you make sure that your headers, the actual words, the body content, also have the keywords in there, but and that your images are described as well using alternative text. The Google's little robots don't know what an image is unless you describe it. So that's it. And I go back to this one because also you may wish to think about putting some emotion into the descriptions rather than just making them factual base and I'll show you an example in a moment. So that is on-page SEO. It's about making those pages on your website findable by Google. Off-page SEO are all these places you can have that will you can optimize but then will bring visitors to your website. So you may on example Choose the bottom left. You may be on directories such as Yelp. You may be on social such as Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever. And you're optimizing those places with words and you're setting up links to revisit or to visit your website. That's off page SEO. So on page, off page. Now, the other thing to think about is what I call technical SEO about all the things that might or may not be right with your website. And here, using the Google Search Console, as well as Google Page Speed Insights. And if you type your website into those, it'll tell you what's wrong and how to fix it. It's the Page Speed Insights and the Google Search Console. Free tools to use, and it'll tell you what's technically right and what needs to be fixed. Right. The next thing we'll talk about is paper click. You can get yourself on the front page of Google if you pay for the privilege. So you may wish to crack open the piggy banks, and if especially if you're product based, to have an ad and to be on high in a search. So here is a great example about using emotion, but also making the great keywords. And it was direct line. Let me read this to you. Come direct, direct line, for a car insurance quote you can't get anywhere else, 24-7, UK emergency phone, etc. So what they've done is use keywords like car insurance, direct line, and come direct. So you're not paying for meerkats, you're paying coming direct. So sometimes think about when you're writing your descriptions of your website, sometimes it's the opportunity to tell people why you're unique and why they should click on you. So again, it's a great example of shoehorning in optimization with pay-per-click. Now, I've shown this a number of times. There are offers out there. Yes, Google would like you to spend some money with them. And here's an example of an opportunity I took on behalf of a client that Google gave me the princely sum of £75. So I spent £75 with them. 
They gave me 75 pounds and I had 100 pounds worth of paper click. They are there. You will How do I find these offers? That's what you're asking. Well, if you go on to your own Google My Business page, I would lay money. There'll be an offer there. And there we go. Right. Think about also about paid search ads. Come on, Simon. What's a paid search ad? Here we are. On the right hand side there, you may be visiting somebody's blog or page, and there is an advertisement on the right hand side. Or here, you may be in a newspaper and an advert has appeared. So you can actually spend money with Google in two ways. One is to be a search ad, so you're getting to the first page of Google, or secondly, paid ads where you'll be part of somebody else's content. You have the two options. Now, search ads versus display ads. So the search ads will be high volume, will work well for immediate services I mentioned like plumber etc so you can get onto that first page the advantage of the displayed ads is that in, they are more flexible and you will probably have better brand presence in an image than you will do in the content on a first page and you can remarket people so you can get software where you someone can visit your website you when leave you they're leaving cookies and you can remarket to them it's called remarketing or retargeting so we've covered email marketing website seo pay-per-click and we're moving on to content marketing what is content marketing well there are a few examples i'm just going to show you or on the screen blogs video Vlogs, which is a combination of vlog and video, and also to use podcasts. Time is short today. We're only going to cover blogs. It is think about writing content and think that you would tell me something I don't know and think about you talking to somebody in a very personal way and to create 500 words and to put this article on your website. Right. But you can do a lot more than that. If you're creating that content, you can use that content, I think, at least 10 different ways. If you're creating those words, you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on LinkedIn, you can guest blog it, you can create, you can use different paragraphs in different ways. And there's lots of ways you can repurpose the content. So you can do so much if you're writing copy and putting it on your website because you can also use guest blog. So you can post it on platforms such as Medium or specialist platforms that may be very relevant to your industry. So content marketing, writing copy and putting it on your website, ideally using keywords. Mm -hmm. And you, where would you find the guest blogs? Well. You go to industry magazines, leaders, even look for guest bloggers and, and find backlinks. You can, there's lots of places to go to find influencers and areas to go in which you can re-put your content rather than just it being on your website, we can put it somewhere else. So it's actually creating content that can be used in lots of different places. Now, a few tips on content. We're in difficult times. The, the ages and era of the hard sell are probably, hmm, well, have been long gone. So I would think when you actually are writing or creating video is to think about educating and not irritating. People like to absorb interesting, informed information, but presented in a very educational way. So my top tips, is to think about aiming stuff at specific audiences, to put your keywords in, to set up links from your posts to your website, use the right hashtags, and, you, and to think about you, what's like called repurpose content 
no use it in different content so you may put an article on your on facebook be slightly different to one linkedin or to or to guestbox so don't just repeat the same words you may want to repurpose it and we'll now move on to affiliate marketing what is affiliate marketing well what it is is using sites such as this there'll be sites out there like which welcome to yorkshire trip advisor and you will be on these sites or links will be set up from these sites to your own website so for example if you had a tourist attraction or you may well be spend money with welcome to yorkshire welcome to yorkshire have a lot more visitors to your than you will have and they link to your website in the same way as if you're a pub or restaurant so unfortunately difficult times at the moment but you can use tripadvisor to actually have a micro site there and link to your own website and if you are a specialist like a counselor or therapist you'll often be part of a specific directory much the same way as if you're on a holiday home or something like that so you can think about using affiliates and it's taken me 50 minutes to get to the point of talking about social media i'm only going to talk about very briefly and i think the one piece of advice i'd offer everybody is about using video not a great surprise you say that so you can use it live or create your own video content and so you may wish to use video for q a for showing people product or how to explanation or you may wish to have over 30 million views showing somebody skateboarding down the street drinking cranberry juice now what simon talking about now he's been waffling on for nearly an hour well look that up that gentleman went viral on TikTok and on other platforms by posting a video of him skateboarding on the street drinking ocean spray and that's part of the and and the byproduct of that is that a lot of us are going around humming fleetwood max dreams and there's been a, an upswing in sales of both that and Fleetwood Max uh, uh, music because of this one gentleman uh, miming a song on a skateboard. There you are, a bit inquisitive. Now, that's what social media is all about. It's about engagement. So if you'd like the best bang from your buck is to make sure you create engaging content and you don't just post. You actually reply to people you engage with others don't be the pub bore so i've got five minutes to talk about offline digital marketing and here are some examples some very clever ones and this was good old gordon ramsay you can't beat him for his program there was actually interactive billboards he was talking to customers. This was over in Los Angeles. So many clever ways in which you can use marketing, again, to try and reach people's eyeballs. Quite common now, you know, virtual reality. Again, you've seen that situation. Look at the queue there. This is the very first time in the fashion industry that people are using this here to actually give customers a completely different experience that may well be relevant your own world and here was a great example this was in a clothing shop where they actually had uh, selling thermal products and they were set up their own little freezer you can put on the clothes and go inside and try to turn them on <laughs> health and safety of course a big issue but they are what a clever way of using offline digital activities to actually put all those three examples there some very clever ways of doing disruptive marketing not just about doing stuff online so and also now you've seen it with i've already mentioned in a slightly different context bus shelter but here you are lego again it's a very clever way of using uh using it as a gordon ramsay example interactive stuff you see it on the London Underground or elsewhere where there's interactive activity in signage. Again, offline digital marketing. 
So there's lots of other ways in which you can do things. And you see it at football grounds. You see it in, in, all the time with the advertising that's taking place there. So that was a whistle-stop tour, a beginner's guide to digital marketing. Now, I'm going to shout an apology. If I've gone too fast and covered too much stuff, I humbly apologize. If I lost anybody, I apologize. But if you found it useful, and engaging and you feel like it's helped you then that's very helpful and if you have any questions please feel free to pop them up on the screen and i'm going to spend the next five minutes to try and answer those but i'd like to thank you for being here today and next week we're going to be talking about this particular gentleman that's not jesse eisenberg that all next week will be about how to use facebook for your business so I'm going to stop. I'm going to come over to the, the chat line. I'm going to see if anybody has any questions. Which, well, quite a few people got Elon Musk right. Kevin, that wasn't my car. So, uh, so. any questions for anybody? Well, if not, I'm going to hang around for the next few minutes. I'm going to thank everybody for putting me up on the chat line. Thank everybody for attending. And if you, if and hopefully see you next week, we will get a copy, I say, of the slides, and we'll put the uh, the webinar up on the screen. And if anyone wants any, anyone's in the Humberside area wants any specific help for their business, drop me an eye because there is the funding and help to, to, to help any any business in the world of marketing. Without further ado, I'm going to thank everybody for listening, and I will say we'll hang on for a minute or two. If not, I wish you a good afternoon. Can I ask you something very quick, please? You can indeed. Yeah, I um, just want to ask you is about digital marketing, because I have a retail shop in yep. Hull. So I just want to know what, what what's the best place or what's the best site to use to create oh, you a say, website? Okay, you say guitar? To create a website, I have a shop in Hull, a retail yeah. shop. It, it depends on what you want your website to do. But often the, the uh, there's lots of uh, places to go. But if you want uh, the most popular website in terms of design is the likes of WordPress. And so you can use that as a template. And if you are trading online, probably use the likes of Shopify. WordPress, Shopify, and they are, they can be used by, they're capable of people using them themselves. Has that helped? Yeah. Is Thank that okay? you very much. If not, yeah, you can speak, I'm sure you may be able to find a local web designer, but they're the two platforms that would be the most common that people can use, one for e-commerce and one just to build possibly an information website. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.